So folks, I've said this once and I'm going to keep on saying it. I have some of the most intelligent viewers on this entire platform. And one thing you guys have been bang on correct about is that Letitia James is the real deal. That she is working harder and smarter than anyone when it comes to taking old Donnie and Ivanka and the rest of the family down and she is not giving up. And one thing we just got, it's a brand new bomb dropped on Ivanka and daddy and all the rest, is that she just connected the various investigations unlike anyone else yet everyone else is working in silos they're not working together at least not enough at least not evidently but she is and she's making it very clear that she's paying attention to every aspect of the family criminality to nail them in her case and help others nail them later on first I want to show you this clip because it's of Michael Cohen somebody who worked very closely with Tish James saying that Donald Trump continues whether it's in this case or it's the Margaret a Mar-a-Lago one to use a combative approach, but that's not going to work with Tish James. And afterwards, I'm going to explain why. Have to sit there and we have to play this game with a former president of the United States. I want my documents back. Well, he's not entitled to them. First and foremost, they're not his. Second of all, we know that he has more documents. And they know that because in the file folder, it would specifically state the number of documents in them. Well, there's obviously more that are out there. On top of that, we should find out whether or not he photocopied any of the documents right. as well. But now he's playing the art of the deal, which, by the way, he didn't write that book anyway. But he's playing the art of the deal where I'll trade you this for that. Right. Which if is this unheard was you, of. I'll, this is beyond unheard of. Ali, if this was you, certainly if it was me, right, we would be in jail in 24 hours. The fact that they're placating him right. only gives him the belief that he has more power than what he originally does. And think about what he's asking. He wants, I'll trade you this top secret information, but I want information on the Russian investigation. Well, here's a little, it's a little side note for Donald, who I hope is watching the program today. You were the president of the United States for four years. You had your lapdogs from Jeff Sessions to Attorney General Bill Barr right. in there. You're going to tell could me you could have gotten them in. Yeah. Of course you could have. You're the president. Hell, you could declassify stuff just by thinking it. Imagine if you actually gave an offer. Right. Yeah, you gave us, you know, a, a, a demand to your lapdog Attorney General right. Bill Barr. Go get me every single document. He could have done that. You were in his orbit when, when he, the documents he's looking for. Uh, about the campaign. You were still in his orbit at the time. I was never part of the campaign, which is what kind of makes the whole campaign finance thing also fugazi. On top of that, you'll read in the book Revenge. I never committed tax evasion. I never committed lying to a bank. Um, Lanny Davis went wild when all of this was going on, went on every single television show showing. I'm a guy who's never been audited in my entire life, unlike Trump. I've never not paid taxes. I've never even requested an extension of time. I paid over $5 million in taxes during the, that time period. And all of this was in the sentencing memo that we provided to Judge William H. Pauley III, who ignored it completely. And the belief, according to at least statements by FBI agents, mm-hmm. some that are still in and some that are out, which you'll read in the book, they all knew was a lie. But yet they needed to go ahead and to do this. And then if you think about what recently came out in Berman's book, where he makes the statement that the attorney general was putting pressure on their office to whitewash Trump or individual number one from any of the you know uh, statements that I had made and only hold right. it on tax evasion and then campaign finance, you know, as well as Look, I'm responsible for Stormy Daniels. I, I take responsibility for that. I'm not responsible for Karen McDougal. That's David Pecker. All you have to do is Google it. But yet, I was still charged with it and fined for it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you spent time in jail. Yes, I did. Let's talk about uh, what happens here with with Donald Trump. It seems he's getting mixed advice from his lawyers, if he can hang on to his lawyers. Um, There's a a dominant camp that wants him to take this adversarial posture that we're reporting on. And there's another camp that says, uh, perhaps you shouldn't. He always takes an adversarial posture, right? I mean, always. When does he ever not? When, do you have any experience of Donald Trump ever saying, all right, you know what, let's just get, give them the documents and, and maybe this will end? No. In fact, during other investigations, he had literally polled almost every single person in the office asking whether or not Alan Garten, who is the, now is the uh, general counsel to the Trump organization, whether or not he should have provided those documents pursuant to subpoena. And when we would all say, yeah, it's pursuant to subpoena. You have to. 
Not to mention, he didn't want to lose his law license. None, nobody did. Right? What ends up happening is he looks for the next guy and the next guy. You and said to me last last time you and I talked that the, the, the last everybody wants to be the last voice in Donald Trump's ear. Yeah, the last voice in Donald's ear owns the conversation, owns the space in between those ears. And so it doesn't matter who that person is, as long as they side with what he wants, what he already, his knee-jerk reaction. And it doesn't matter whether that person is real or imaginary. He'll turn around as he does on television and say, you know, I spoke to a very smart guy and he said, that smart guy doesn't exist. It only exists in his, in his mind. It's an alter ego. It's John Bannon. So listen, you can see in a sense that Trump, again, whether it's the Mar-a-Lago case or this one, continues to just use his lawyers and use the system as a battering ram. He doesn't understand being conciliatory. Even if objectively, like if we were advising him, I wouldn't advise Trump, you wouldn't either. But if we were, if we were stuck in that unenviable position, we would say to him, look, man, you got to chill. You got to actually work a deal here. You're clearly guilty. So whether it's in the Tish James stuff or the the, the Mar-a-Lago stuff, you got to get a deal, bro. And it's not happening. And that might work, actually, when you're dealing with somebody across the table, maybe like a brag that's a bit weak. But when you're dealing with Tish James, she is going to bulldog you even harder. And what Cohen is saying is that Tish James is the one taking him down. In notes here, I'm not going to read it to you because I've, I've covered some of these things before, but it basically says that not only is she going after the $250 million, that's the bare minimum, but also what he's saying is that Tish James's work, the work that she's done building off the Cohen testimony and all the things she's dug up has also led to criminal referrals to the IRS and to the uh, to the attorney general. It's also led to more evidence that could be used in the Weisselberg thing where he's been given, you know, a, a big, big plea deal to testify against the Trump organization. But you can't really testify against the organization without at least indirectly testifying against Trump and the kids. So this is massive. But here's where the new bit comes in, because if you remember Donald Trump made a promise to Tish James a long time ago, a few weeks, if not months ago now, where he actually gave over all of his documents. Remember, he was held in contempt, fined over $100,000, and he and his lawyers eventually promised, they wrote a sworn affidavit basically saying, we dug through all of his office and personal space for every document about his taxes and finances, and we pinky square that we gave them to you. And now Tish James is saying that in light of the Mar-a-Lago raid, she doesn't think that's the case because this thing is just getting started. And it says, but as a result of the FBI's raid on Mar-a-Lago this summer, in a separate investigation related to classified documents, James seems to have grown skeptical about the thoroughness of Habba's search. James's lawsuit suggests that, even after the contempt ruling, there are indications that Trump held back documents at Mar-a-Lago, not just classified ones, but financial ones. And it says, but even after almost two years of litigation, it appears that it may still be the case that not all responsive documents were produced. Among other things, in litigation over a search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago on August 8, 2022, the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Florida noted that the seized materials include correspondence related to taxes and accounting information. Documents concerning taxes and accounting information would appear to be responsive to the OAG subpoena, but no such documents for Mr. Trump were produced by counsel for Mr. Trump despite a representative that counsel that claimed I diligently searched each and every one of the respondents' private residence and blah, blah, blah. So she's got them here. She's caught them dead to rights. She wants that stuff. And again, whether it's Daddy, Ivanka, or all the rest, she's dropping bombs. And Letitia James is just getting started.